the aperture is one of the three components of the exposure triangle, along with ISO and shutter, but we'll cover those in separate videos. The aperture is located in the lens and not the camera body, but can often on most still cameras be controlled directly from the camera body. On cinema lenses or older vintage lenses, the aperture can instead be controlled directly on the lens using an aperture ring, just like the focus. The aperture is a physical component to the lens that determines the opening of the lens and how much light is allowed to pass through it. The bigger the aperture opening, the more light will be able to pass through, which will give you a brighter image or exposure. So how is this measured? Well, aperture is measured in stops, f-stops for stills lenses and t-stops for cinema lenses. But for the sake of simplicity, let's ignore t-stops for now, since you'll probably be using lenses with f-stops anyway. A lens might have a maximum aperture of let's say f2. It can close down all the way to f22. The way aperture is measured actually means that a lower number means the opening is bigger and more light is let through. This is because f-stop is a ratio between the focal length and the physical opening of the lens. Bigger opening means smaller number. So our lens will let the maximum light into the camera and therefore give the brightest image at an f-stop of 2. To understand how changing the aperture number will affect the image, you'll have to learn the f-stop scale. So let's start with our aperture of 2. If we want to go to the next stop in the scale, that would be 2.8. Changing from f2 to 2.8 is one full stop, and one stop is either double the amount of light or half, depending on which direction you go in. Of course, you don't always have to change in full stops. Most stills cameras will allow you to change in increments of thirds as well. Well, let's get back to the f-stop scale. We have 2 and 2.8. What's next? And here's the trick that makes it much easier to remember. Every other number, it doubles. So to find out what's after 2.8, we just have to look at what's before. Before 2.8, we have 2. So the next one is f4, which is double of 2. And it continues like this. So next up, we have 5.6, after that 8 then 11, 16, and 22. And if we want one stop brighter than 2, we have 1.4, which as you can see is also half of 2.8. One stop brighter than that would be 1, which is half of 2. You get the picture. The scale can theoretically be expanded in either direction, but these are the most common, and if you know these, you're set. So let's say an image is properly exposed at f2. If we instead go to 2.8, we will only let in half the amount of light, resulting in a darker image, or one stop underexposed. If we go another stop to f4, we will have half the light of 2.8, which means one quarter compared to our original f2. Another stop, 5.6, would mean half of f4, which is one eighth of f2. And this goes on. Every stop is half or double of the previous one, depending on which direction you go in. But the amount of light being let through isn't the only function of the aperture. The aperture also controls the depth of field, how much is in focus, or in other words, the amount of background blur. If we take the same examples of f2, 2.8, 4, and 5.6, but this time I compensate for the change in exposure with other settings, we can isolate this function. If we start and look at the f2 clip, this is our baseline. We can then go to 2.8, followed by f4, and then finally 5.6. Did you notice a difference? If we compare the first and last clips, f2 and 5.6, we can see that the 5.6 clip has more in focus. This is a function that we can use for storytelling. We can control how much of the scene is in focus. If you want to isolate your subject and have a shallow depth of field, in other words, a blurrier background, you will use a more open aperture, which has a lower number. 
if you want to have more in focus, you use a higher number and a more closed down aperture. So if you're looking at buying lenses and wonder what the numbers 1.4, 2 or 2.8 for example means, that is the maximum aperture of that lens. Every lens has a maximum aperture and the smaller that number is, the more light that lens can let through, which could be a real benefit in a low light situation. So to summarize, the aperture has two functions, controlling how much light can pass through the lens as well as the depth of field. A bigger aperture with a smaller number will let more light into the camera, as well as giving you a shallower depth of field, less in focus. A smaller aperture or a bigger number will give you a darker image by letting less light through, and at the same time give you a deeper depth of field, meaning more in focus. But that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.